four. <coughs> now so this is to uh, give uh, or to raise a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Oh, for a another cop in the school, basically. Right? We call additional them school, school resource, resource uh, officers. Uh, that's correct. I call them cops in school. School resource yeah. officers. But how we refer to them? Called school resource officers. That's correct. But I think of them as cops in school. And uh, so, do you want to say anything on this, Nathan? Or uh, no, okay. I do. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so uh, this is a priority for our school board, um, safety in our building, and we've already been through some of the dis discussion and the deliberations. Uh, safety has been a number one priority for our school board and have done a number of um, things as, uh, to, to look at safety in our schools. Uh, last year we had a forum uh, attended by uh, 75 to 100 folks in the community uh, where we presented uh, of the various strategies and um, practices and drills, if you will, uh, that we conduct every day, every year with our kids. And, uh, and in that conversation with the community, it was very clear that the community suggested to the board, and all the board members were there, uh, that we should have a school of resource officer in each of our buildings. You know, it's really interesting, and the research does support this for a number of reasons. The one is, is that the visibility, the officer in the school, the, the, the fact that all, as you know, when you come by our schools, you'll see the, the um, officer's car, the vehicle out there uh, that does act as a deterrent. With all of that information, with a strong uh, support from the community, uh, the board deliberated this year and decided uh, to add a third uh, resource officer for our school. Currently, we have one at Hampton Academy. They're pretty much at Hampton Academy, although I have to tell you that they do move from building to building. I mean, we even have the school officer on occasion from Winnicunnan who comes down to our buildings and walks around with uh, and meets with the youngsters, meets with teachers, meets with the principal. So it's pretty fluid, but for the most part, we have one full-time at Hampton Academy. This year, we are sharing an officer between uh, Center School and Marston School. Uh, they, uh, they, she, the, the officer moves between those two buildings, uh, providing the visibility uh, to the, to the uh, community uh, around uh, their presence in the building. Uh, again, the board felt pretty strongly uh, that a third officer um, uh, would be a deterrent. And, and, and assist in that whole, the whole, all the issues that you talked about tonight around incidences that occur in our schools. Uh, we're very pleased with the work that's done. We've been working in collaboration with the Hampton Police Department. We work very closely with Deputy Hobbs as well as Chief Sawyer. Uh, they meet with the board on a regular basis, updating us on safety. And as you know, the governor convened a group of people. Um, they are recommending uh, the school resource officer be uh, included in, um, in uh, safety plans, um, as well as other issues. Uh, it isn't the only one that they recommended, uh, but this is a strong deterrent uh, relative to uh, uninvited um, individuals into our buildings. Thank you. Any questions or comments, Mr. Walberg? Uh, <clears throat> I have to correct you on a few statements. I was at that safety forum in May. I think there were about 70 people, but I didn't realize that 70 people decide for the taxpayers. There were no votes taken that night. And I can also assure you, and my friend to my left can assure that, that long before that meeting took place, every member of your school board told me they were going to put a resource officer. That was right after the March election. So it had nothing to do with the safety farm. The other question I had, and I asked you this, and this is why it's so important that we had the discussion this evening about security. I think we need to shore up the security issues in this community instead of throwing one officer after the other. And, and let me be sure that everybody understands this. When Chief Wren was in charge, probably the best police chief this community and state has ever had, mm -hmm. Bill Wren, we put, based on his recommendation, one school resource officer, Mike remembers, at Winnicott High School, because Bill felt that was, that's where it was needed. This is when this program, at that level of kids, this was never meant to be this, um, every time somebody's feared or, or we all have things, hey, I have grandchildren, but I'm going to lock them up and keep them in a room and, and just throw somebody after them everything. Um, I think 
I think we need to take a step back and maybe that hundred thousand dollars think about it you know and it's in the discussion is going to come up uh, with what would I mentioned chairman as far as when we get to the budget it's all correlated let's take a step back and think about what we're really doing we're talking the comments I hear we're making our schools safer so if a child walks out of Hampton Academy and gets on Academy Avenue at 240 and somebody wants to cause a scene or whatever, it's going to happen anyway, right? I think what we've got to, and when we keep talking, we keep hearing from the school board about how the community is just, so if something else happens next year, are we then going to say we need a second school resource officer? And there's a little misleading statements by last night. This is the third school resource officer we're asking for. This isn't, I, I, the chairman made a comment like, I forget exactly, and I'm not going to quote less, like, the wording, let's be very clear. This is a third school resource for SAU 90, and we've already got one at SAU 21. I think there's too many, and, and to Mr. Zanoy's point and my colleagues tonight, there's just too many open issues on security, which I think Sergeant Henderson sat here, retired Sergeant Henderson sat here at this board and talked against the school resource officer. As a matter of fact, most recently he said to me, we need to be concentrating on security measures. Get that all under control first before we keep adding another full-time school resource officer. I had a resident, and, and, and I want to also bring into fact this, um, you made a comment last night, and I think it's very important, and I applaud the chairman for the way he's run these meetings this year, because no questions ever get asked. You guys have had it kind of easy the last nine years, quite frankly. I mean, you have, so the I question. I think that's your opinion. Well, no, uh, well, no I, I, I appreciate Kathleen. that, but no, no, that's no, no, your opinion. Florida expresses opinion. But I, I watch all the meeting, but. Well, I just want to be clear that okay, it's an opinion. But understand, but I, I need you to know that I hang out with a bunch of different people. I supported your school edition for $26 million. It passed by only 13 votes in March of 2017. There is still a lot of people, unlike what was said last night at your meeting, that aren't happy about it. And they were hoping that be there no increases in this town, in, in budgets, never mind the town, and we'll deal with that tomorrow night. But that's the point I'm saying, it's all relevant. And to say that the community embraces, it's like saying everything, every time there's a major accident or a major tragedy, in 2000, in, 11, uh, in 2001, I cried my eyes out at Liberty Mutual when I lost three friends in the towers. But I didn't stop living. I, I just think that we've got to be, we've got to kind of take a step back here. And, and if what I hear everybody saying at your board, let's get this other school resource officer and everything's going to be fine. we got one in every school now. And why don't we have, the, and, and this is not your decision, more <coughs> patrols on the streets. That's what we should be doing. It's having somebody sit and reading a book to somebody at the center school, and I'm not being facetious, is not my idea. And I just can't keep putting money. And then the only thing I'm going to add, uh, Kathleen, and you know this, there are many school districts in this state who would not agree with you, and many school districts who don't have the funds to fund this. So when we hear about everybody has to do this now, and, and, I, and I know Regina pointed out the other night, and it is relative too, the other problem we're dealing with is it's being looked upon as Hampton is this rich community. It, it's like a f overflowing of money. That's why we're not going to get the uh, DES monies, is it, Regina, like we used to get the percentage? We're going to get 0 to 5 percent. 0 to 5 percent. 15 to 20. And the reason that's important, if we keep building these budgets and building these budgets, but I want to be very clear because I am a person who communicates. I was at that meeting. There was no standard ovation. There was no votes that were taken by the 100 people. There was a very big support. There's no question. But there was also a lot of people who asked questions about security. So to sit here and say that all of a sudden we need that school resource officer that's going to take a magic bond over everything when we're talking about education, and the only other comment I'm going to make which concerns me, I watched your meeting last night, and on two occasions you referenced that the school resource officers sit in your leadership meetings? Did I hear you say that last night? No, I, no, I didn't well, say I, that. Well, I watched the replay. What, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. Would you like me to yeah, finish? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. What I did say was is that there is a program called Project LEAD, which, which is a program, 10-week program, in a K through 8 system that, that, um, this, that our officers 
could participate in with our teachers. We looked at it, and I asked that they come and present that piece with the two teachers that we had trained. In addition, we are undergoing training in Alice, and those two offices, along with two of our middle, uh, middle school principal and our elementary principal, this summer went to training, and they're going to present to our leadership team the strategies involved in Alice. What is it, Alice? Alice is a form of um, protection uh, when an invader or someone comes into your building, what are the protocols that you would do uh, to protect the kids? So Alice is a acronym? Right? Acronym, okay. right. So, and no one knows uh, what it means, it stands for. Right, okay. so I have, in fact, invited the school resource officer to attend the meeting to share what they learned with uh, Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Lannon. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Frank. Yes, uh, I'd like to respond to Mr. Uh, Warburton's uh, comments. Uh, first of all, I also attended that safety forum, and we're going to look at having another safety forum in the near future. Okay, we don't want another Parkland situation to occur in Hampton. Hampton is not that quote unquote utopian society that has no crime. Okay, I think we can take a very close look at the beach situation during the summer. I think we can also look at what took place a year ago up here at Lafayette Road, all right, with an incident that the police responded and close Lafayette Road down. So those days of the 40s, the 50s of safety, you can leave your door open and sleep secure at night are gone. They're gone from this community as well as any other community, okay? That forum, there was a number of proposals. One was to arm teachers, bring guns into the school and arm them, okay? Who knows, maybe a teacher has an off day, may whack out, decide to start shooting, possibly in a science room, okay? We don't know that, okay? It was a consensus that we do not arm teachers, that we look at other opportunities. Chief Sawyer, who is part of the commission for the state, is looking into opportunities to protect our kids in our school system, okay? One of those recommendations was an SRO. We didn't come up with two SROs last year because we didn't want to put pressure on the, on the voters to react to a parkland. We wanted to do it step by step, one step at a time, all right? There are people in this community who have children in those three schools mm -hmm. that want security. They want a resource officer there. That's why the board supported that motion, okay? There may be some antiquated individuals in this town, okay, that don't believe that we need this. Well, that's fine, okay? But I'm saying we've had Combine. We've had Parkland. I know Brian doesn't believe in that because Brian still has that utopian feeling that kiss and make friends, and we don't have wackos out in the street, and we don't have people carrying guns in town, okay? But you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. So that's right? why we voted for an SRO. Put right? the weapon, they'll have the floor, in the, the hands of somebody that's trained. You all set, Fred? I'm sorry. Okay. Ms. Barnes. Yes. Um, during the 2017 budget deliberations, uh, Ginny Russell was our school board rep then. And I think that was the year that you guys came for the first one. Was that 2017 or 2018 for you? So I believe she said then that it was most likely that this was going to happen. And to be honest with you, I was expecting it. If that's the way that it's decided to be handled, it's with the school board, the police department. I'm very comfortable with what they, uh, how they operate in the town of Hampton and they are, I agree with you, Brian, I don't like the way people react to things nowadays, but unfortunately that's the way it is and we have to deal with it. So uh, I think we have three schools and I think three school resource officers make sense. 
I know my nieces and nephews that attend the Hampton schools, they have relationships with all the officers that are there. And I think that's very positive in this day and age, too, that uh, kids in I mean, I know I always had a good relationship with the police growing up. And I think that also adds to uh, the children's experience. And I think that it matters a lot when a mom and dad both have to work during the day, which is most of the case. Both parents go to work. And you know they don't see their kid all day, so if they're looking, if that resource officer being there is a comfort to them, I think school board made the right decision. So I'm in support of this. All set. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Anybody else? No. Jerry. Yeah, I, I'll just make a few points. You know, this, this, this one here. We all have to use our judgments and our collective experience, what we read, what we hear arrive at our own positions, if you will. But, you know, what we've kept, we kept hearing when all these shootings take place is what we never thought it would happen here. This has been a perfect community. Everybody goes to church on Sunday, and yet the school got shot up. Okay? That's, we, we hear that one of the ones. I, I, I googled how many school shootings we've had. I came up with a terrible number of, it started in 1800, it was 284 or something like that, shootings that occurred in school or on school grounds. Of course, I didn't get to, to drill down uh, to get the last five years or ten years, but this business of mass shootings in schools and auditoriums and sporting events is, is with us. I don't like myself because it bumps that budget by 100K when it gets passed and probably will and, and it gets assimilated. So that tears me in one direction. But these shootings are with us. They are with us. They're with us today in society. And I never thought it would happen here. Mm -hmm. It keeps repeating over and over and over again. We're not going to arm our teachers with guns. We're not going to have metal detection, at least, that, that I know of at this point in time. <laughs> Maybe that's in the plan. So I'm torn with this. However, I think I would fall right now. And hopefully it's not in perpetuity forever. I, would, I, I guess I would have to fall for it in, in the center school. OK, anyone else who has not been hurt from? I have a couple of questions. Um, the hundred thousand dollars we have in here is, does that include uh, benefits? Yes. As well as payroll taxes. Yes. And is that only for a nine-month period? The position was for a full-time um, officer. That's a good point. Then. The because it's not in the police department's budget, this covers the entire salary for that position. However, we is, is and I didn't say this in my opening in my remarks. They bill us. They bill us every, um, is it every I think it's quarterly. Uh, quarterly. They bill us quarterly. They being the police. The police yeah. department. So um, based on the, the, you know, they're there, their work, if they, and, and there have been times when an officer might be pulled and another officer replaces, so there's a different pay differential. I, we don't, I didn't get into that. But it does cover the cost of an officer for 12 months because chief of police did not put that position in the budget but we're only billed for what we use that person for okay so you've got a uh, hundred thousand dollar appropriation assuming this passes right and you may in the subsequent year be billed for say eighty thousand dollars that's correct right? thus you have uh, twenty thousand dollars going into your assigned fund balance, right? that's correct right and that would be your expectation Yes, roughly it always is of the board. You know, as you know, it always is of the board. The board is very careful about that with their fund balance. You know that they they return money That's back sure. to the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's no doubt about that. Right. I just want to get a sense of right. what what real right. cost we're talking about. So right. is this eighty twenty thing that I just threw out? Is that within the bounds of your expectations? <laughs> it's it's the it's, it's the cost that we it's our first it's our first year and so I don't know what the billing will look I, I expect it to be the fullness of the hundred thousand. It's gonna be the first year. You've got two others in play right now. No. Are they no. dealt with differently? Yes, the, the the first one that we had at Hampton Academy has been dealt with differently because the the department 
picked up part of it. Back then, they had that officer in their ranks. So they worked with us for part of the year, the school year, okay. and then they were they worked in the department for whatever their duties were. Okay, so the first school resource officer, so you, you do not get billed for? No, we do, but okay. we don't get billed at the same level as the current one. And we don't know what that final number will be for this okay. current one. And the second school resource officer, which was authorized last year. That's right. Is that treated the same as the first or is it the no, same as the third? No, it's not. Will be? It's the th it will be treated just like the third one. Okay, great. Okay. So now I'm getting a clearer picture of what we're suggesting or proposing here. And if I may ask. No, you may not. You don't have the floor. No, no. Just want to say one thing. You do the, not have the number the floor. we got Frank, is from the not, police department. Frank, you do not have the floor. So we're actually knowingly asking for an appropriation greater than our need. That's what I'm hearing. And I. I'm, do you want an answer or do you want to? Well, it wasn't a question, but you can respond to it if you like. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to respond sure. to it. And as Mr. DeLuca just said, that figure and that information that we had relative to that position and the costs associated with that position came from the police department. Right, but the 80-20 rule. So, or but the again, half the guess that I put out. It's our so first consistent. experience with it. We're not exactly sure what yeah. that cost will yeah. be. So, that that. Well, we got experience with it this past year, right? <clears throat> no, we're only halfway through that year. Hmm. And how is that proceeding? Is it is it is it in, in projected to be basically 80-20, uh, as I was suggesting earlier? I'm I'm projecting the the second officer yeah. that that was approved at the March 18 meeting that right. started with us this, this summer. I'm I'm projecting right now financially that we'll pay the full hundred thousand. Really? Because hmm. because I thought that was that was the expectation. The only way the officer existed is if we picked up the full freight. And so that was what the Right. That's and what I was the expecting was. to hear that on the third one as well, but and I'm I, not. And I expect, I expect that to be the case on the third one. It's not the case with the first one because that was a pre-existing mm -hmm. officer, and okay. so the appropriation in the budget's different. Um, but I don't know yet what that, what, what that will look like when the year is done. So we're actually, uh, just I guess going back to the earlier question, was we're actually going to pay $100,000 to the police department to pay this officer that we put, the third officer we put in the schools, all right? That's what the budget and the financials expect. I mean, it's not going to be a billing Until kind of thing. It's like, you know, you know here's your $100,000 for the year for the third cop in our school. That's basically what you're going to pay, right? Based upon the, based upon the expectation, my, that was my expectation, the way that it was presented and proposed right. when we talked about the second officer, and I assume the third would be the same. Right. So this billing thing is, is not... Not does not apply, except for the one annual thing. Yeah, we give me a hundred thousand. You might say, well, give it to me in six payments or whatever, but it's still going to total up to a hundred thousand, no matter what, right? I mean, that you pay to the police department for this third. Again, officer. again, I encumbered the funds because I, that was the commitment that was made, was that we would talk about the third officer. Here. The third officer, I, I expect, I expect that we'd have to pay the funds. Okay, that's, that was my original expectation, but I got a little sidetracked. I don't quite know, understand why that happened, but I want to get clarity for everybody. We're appropriating or proposing to appropriate $100,000. All of that $100,000 will be sent over to the Hampton Police Department to pay for the personnel costs associated with a third uh, cop of the school, also known as a third re school resource officer, right? Do I have that that's right? That's correct. Okay. Sorry, my mind is very simple. I need these simple things here. I have a question. I, I'm sure you do, and I'm not done. Um, I thought you were. Appreciate that. I, I am. Uh, I am really torn on this because you, you throw up security. And, and Eugenie, did this, we did this in our, our last meeting. I, people throw the word security out there as if there was such an absolute thing, and there ain't. There's no such thing as absolute security. It doesn't exist. Period. So it's a question of how much uh, risk you wish to uh, 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 mitigate, isn't it? And there doesn't seem to be any real discussion here or elsewhere that I'm aware of that actually speaks to that very point 
that when we're talking about security, we're really talking about mitigation of risk and nothing more. Right. And, and so the, the, it becomes like this uh, money pit, if you will. Uh, we can keep throwing money in there, and we're never going to feel secure. But when we first throw it in there, we feel a little more secure than we did before we threw the money in there. But then after we throw the money in there, we look, we say, you know, we still don't feel secure. Let's throw some more money in there. I mean, that seems to be what's going on here. And I, I understand um, the, the human element here is that, you know, you send, you send your kids to school and you want to protect your kids. So, you know, there is no limit to how much you want to spend for that, uh, generally speaking. There are many taxpayers in town who do not send their kids to the schools, right, and may never have done so, uh, who think, well, gee, I don't mind educating the kids, even though I don't drive a direct benefit via my own kids. Uh, I don't mind doing that for various reasons. I don't mind providing a little extra security because of the day and age, day and age we live in uh, may demand a little bit more security. But where do you, you know, where do you draw the line? Because this money pit just keeps sucking up money and it doesn't seem to have an end and the discussions around it don't seem to even want to address the question of is there a point of excess in terms of throwing money down this uh, phantom security hole because it is just that you cannot have total security no matter what you do you'll never have it so that is my concern uh, I brought up last year as you may recall Kathleen and Nathan when you brought up the second school resource officer <laughs> And I suggested, well, we have three schools. Why don't we have one for each school? And, of course, Frank more or less answered that again this year with his earlier statement. He said, well, we didn't want to burden the taxpayers for two in one year. But we were okay with having less security last year than we will be comfortable next year. So, it's, again, it's not an issue of mitigating risk, is it? It's an issue of how much money can we manage to assemble to throw into the money pit that we call security. That's, that's how I'm seeing this problem. And you're never going to have that security. If we really want to have our kids secure, frankly, we'd issue every student a personal bodyguard to take him from his house to the school, stay with him throughout the school, and then be sure he returns safely to home. Even then, we wouldn't have total security, would we? But it would be far more secure than anything we're proposing or even thought of, is it? It is way too expensive to do. That's why we don't even talk about it. But we will keep inching our way toward that eventually, that eventuality, because we keep having this human need to pursue something that doesn't exist, which is total security. So where does it stop? That's a matter for each of our consciousnesses to deal with, in my mind. And in my mind, I look at the history I did a, I, I went through, uh, I believe it was the uh, Washington Post last year after we uh, got done dealing with SAU 90. The Washington Post had done a, an extensive article on the history of school shootings and all this other stuff going on over the past 20 years in the United States. All right? You know how many school shootings we had in New Hampshire? Zero. So there's no Parkland history here at all. There were several in Florida, by the way. How many do we have in Massachusetts? Zero. How many do you have in Maine? Zero. How many do you have in Vermont? Zero. We had one or two in Connecticut. That's it. So we keep going, you know, hundreds and thousands of miles away to, to, to take an example to generate in us a fear that we need to do something. And I think it's just uh, an illusion. Just as sure total security itself is an illusion. So I guess that's all I'm going to say on that matter, I, and I guess you can figure out how I'm leaning on this article. And since uh, you've already spoken on this, right? I have something else to say. Mr. Moore has not spoken. Go ahead. Thank you. I would like a little clarity. I know you two can do it for me. In reference to the $100,000, and then you pay the police department, but yet school ends sometime in June and starts up in September, so they so you're not getting a full year out of them. I'll, I'll say at least two months off, out of July and August. Right. At the same time, on the other hand, are you planning on, because when school practice starts and they use sports in August, which is a good thing, would there, 
what's the status of the school police officer then? That's one question. <coughs> and is the school police officer trained? Is that his or her full-time job, or do they take somebody from the police and they rotate them? How does that work? So the, the um, school resource officers are assigned to the school. That is their full-time job. They aren't, they are not rotating from other officers in, who have different groups and it's consistently the same person every day. Now there are occasions, you know, when they may be out sick or they may have a training and somebody will fill in for them. But as a rule, since this program has started, they have been consistently the same officer every day. So what about July and August? What are they so doing? in July and August, they work for the town. In a regular police In a regular police role. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, it's $100,000 really for like 10 months, or actually probably nine months by the time you take out the other times when you, you close in February, you know, holidays and Christmas. That, that gentleman or lady police officer is going to be going other duties right. when the school's closed. That's correct. Thank you, David. Good point. It's an expensive cost. Well, in effect, it's a subsidy to the town the police department, isn't it? That's exactly right. Yeah. Mr. Frank. Yes, I, I just have one more comment to say. Okay, and I've heard everyone's comments. I don't think you can put a price on a child's life. I agree. Okay? That's why we have it. You can't. Let me finish. You can't put a price. And as you said, we really haven't had any school students in New Hampshire. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen tomorrow, or a week from tomorrow, mm -hmm. or a month from tomorrow. All right? We don't know. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if it happens in this community, at one of our schools, and we had the resources and the opportunity to prevent such an action, and we neglected to do that, then the blood is on your hands. That's true. That's true. And the question that we're addressing is whether or not we have the resources. Mr. Walbert. Let me just clarify a few things here. And Mr. Chairman, I gotta tell you, you've been an unbelievable chairman. Just made me think of something very important that we missed. And by the way, I, I agree with the chairman. Uh, it's a school resource officer years ago when they were put in the school to work with the kids. So when Jean is in high school, talk to the kids, the trouble kids and stuff. That's what they call them. But when you're talking about Parkland shootings, and they're a cop. That's what they are. So his point is well taken. You know, you can't have it both ways. I'm going to make another very thing clear to my friend Jerry Zanoy. He's a grandfather. I'm a grandfather. Jerry, go read up on the Parkland shootings. It was the police that filed it up. And the, the people in that school, if you go read that point and direct. The other thing is I'm very surprised at my friend to my left, who has grandchildren. You keep talking about the kids in the school. What about if Regina goes by as a selectman at a daycare and a daycare that one of our grandchildren goes to, a, a cop comes and shoots that up. Or somebody goes to a restaurant in Hampton and shoots that up. And, and nobody's mentioned about the teachers in the schools. All I keep hearing is the kids. We know what teachers we're talking about. I, I know one very well. We, we don't hear about everybody in the schools or the town. Tim Jones has made the very eloquent statement. Security is misleading to, to many extents, and that's my wording. But this stuff about if something happens, if something happens tomorrow, we can't keep throwing money after it. And I'm going to point out very clear, it's being the school resource officer, by the way, so that you all know, and David, I explained this the other day, I think, to you. They have to pay, the school has to pay the Hampton Police Department the cost. But that officer works year-round. They work details on weekends. They work down at beach this summer at any time, all three of them, and including the fourth one at the high school. So when you look at the total cost to a taxpayer, it's not just the contract during the school. The other question I have, and boy, you brought up an excellent point, which I've got to bring up. When they are out, right, you pay a, a person to come in on overtime, correct? You pay a, a, a somebody that takes, let's say, detective, they're all detective now capacities too. That was never the case. Detective DeMarco's case, how was that paid for when, when he's out? We know the answer. I mean. Go ahead. I can't answer that question. All right. So the point is that there are more costs, Jerry, is what I'm saying. I'll end by, I'll end by saying this, and I, and I, listen, I have thick skin. You know, the gentleman on my right said I'm ancient or whatever. That, I'd be honest with you, I'm probably more progressive than anybody in this community. I have voted for every school resource officer. Ryan, yeah. you're antiquated. Oh, that's right. Thank you. That's very useful. 
But I'm not voting for this one. I think we've got to stop it somewhere, especially with everything else. And I don't think the what word that you use, the convincing of the security aspect and what measures are taken. If that's the case, all the people who have kids in this community are going to go anywhere. If I take my granddaughter to love to play or somewhere, I'm going to be concerned. Of course, we all are. But we've got to stop somewhere. And we've got to identify, which we have gotten away from, this school board has gotten away from, the identity of what the school resource officer was. I mean, it, when, when I watch the meetings, they're Mr. Rogers, they're a psychologist, they're a counselor, they bring, they have donuts with the kids, they have meetings with the teachers. But then, with, as the chairman eloquently said, we need this third one because, God forbid, if we have a shooting, which they're now, and they always have been, a cop, then they're turning into something else. What about the office that respond and all that? We could go into d debate on this forever. And by the way, like you, I was torn. And there's a lot of people watching this meeting that are going to be shocked that I'm going to vote against this. But I hope they understand we've got to start somewhere and not just fear mongering every time something goes on. We can't do it and mislead that. So I'm definitely voting against this. No, just to be clear, I'm not torn. I've never been to torn. What I am doing is keeping my mind open so I have to, no, I understand that. to listen to everybody in terms of what yep. they have to say. But I have always maintained an observation that there's way too much emotion involved in this Absolutely. issue and far too little logic. Uh, Ms. Bonds. I would disagree. I think that the problem that you have is with the police department in the town of Hampton and I think the school board, I don't think this is the place to start what you want to start. And like I said before, I'm no going to support this warrant article. I have no idea what that means. Anybody else wish to comment? Yeah. Or that's a pretty Mr. has the floor. Yeah, I agree. I agree with the, the business that uh, he's going to have this July and August off, and he's got three weeks winter vacations and spring vacations and Christmas vacations and so on. So the town police department should be sharing a part of this uh, police officer. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, as I said, I will support this article. Anybody else? Mr. One Frank. Last comment uh, in regard. Uh, we have, I take it, we've just started recently getting bills or they're in the process of billing us. So we don't know if they're billing us for the time that they spend doing town business, okay? We haven't fulfilled that for a solid year yet. We understood it. So, you know, uh, your speculation and that, uh, oh, we're paying for a cop on the town, is, we're not certain of that yet, okay? We have been getting bills, we're looking at that, we're at estimating that, but the bottom line is the resource officer was put into the budget as a warrant article on behalf of citizens that have kids that go to the school, okay? That's what it was done for. Now, you may have people that talk to you, Brian, and tell you we're spending too much money in this and that, but the people that have kids that go to the school, and as well as teachers, Thank that you. resource officer is there to protect life and property of the taxpayer. Right. In that. Right. You all said, Frank? At the, I believe the entire police department is there for that very reason. It's the response uh, Frank, time. Correct. I believe the entire police force is there to protect all of our lives and property. So yeah, you're repeating their credo, I guess. Only you're specifying it to schools in particular. Uh, anybody else? I right, see none. I assume we're all ready to vote, and we're all going to have passionate hand raising, I suppose. All those in favor of recommending the additional cop in the school, raise your hand. Zanoy, Frank, and Barnes, all those opposed, uh, the rest of us. That's uh, three whatever, right? Four. Three, four. three to four. Huh? Three in favor, four opposed. Huh. Three whatever, it's three, four, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I didn't to be numerically accurate, three, four, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>